Welcome to the second video in my YouTube series of um, covering codices and how to use the features and, and uh, a lot of the tools and things that are available in, in codices. Uh, and before we get going, I, I want to thank everybody for viewing the first video. Um, I was happy with the success and a lot of people seem to uh, get on there and take a look and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, and before we get going, uh, if you could, uh, once the video is finished, I'd appreciate it if you could just share and or like the video. That actually helps me and helps the whole whole thing grow so that other people can see it and, and be made aware of it. Um, okay, so let's get going. So what are we going to cover today or cover in this video, the second video? Um, the second video, I'm, I'm, I want to talk about, first of all, before we get too far going, uh, just pop out to the Codasys website here. If I pop out, you know, there's a Codasys website and uh, codasys.com and I would suggest everybody going to that uh, website and take a look. There's a lot of resources here uh, from um, uh, there is a forum, uh, there's a lot of tech documents and things like that and of course the Codasys store is where you can buy first of all you download the software and you would have seen that when you downloaded the software originally but um, also to go and purchase the modules for each company and, and so, you know, if, if you're using a particular company, you want to use a particular company's uh, product, a lot of times you can just go to the Codices store and purchase the uh, module there. Uh, for our series going forward, I would suggest using, if, you, if you're, um, you're going to use the Raspberry Pi, you'd want to go to the Codices store here and actually upload the Raspberry Pi. Uh, module and uh, I'm going to show you how to install that in your in your software actually in this video so uh, yeah without uh, any further ado let's uh, let's get back to the software and take a look um, first thing uh, again I want to I want to just stress is is how Codasys has this great simulator and uh, I'm going to use that simulator um, a, a little bit here and uh, poking around but before we get there I want to show you the Raspberry Pi I want to take you out and and uh, show you downloading to the Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi, if, if you're not aware of that, is a small little experimental uh, computer. Uh, it costs about $45, $35. I think the latest one's $45. And it's a great little tool to uh, to uh, electronics exper experimentation board. Anyways, what you can do is you can buy the module that turns the uh, Raspberry Pi you can buy the module from the Codasys store that turns the Raspberry Pi into a PLC. And of course you can actually use the I.O. right on the uh, Raspberry Pi to turn things on and off and, and, and experiment with things. Of course, I, I wouldn't consider it industrial grade. If you were if you were going to be doing something at an industrial level and you, you wanted to use this in an industrial environment, um, you'd probably want to go with one of the big manufacturers. So, for example, uh, Eaton, Norwego, uh, ABB, Schneider, Beckhoff. They're all some of the big name uh, big name Codasys companies or companies that have hardware that that work with Codasys and, and a lot of these companies actually have their own version of Codasys so they take Codasys and they basically put their name and splash their name on the front and add a couple of things here and there uh, but basically it's still going to be this Codasys that you see on the screen here okay so but for for our purposes just because it's it's experimental and it's uh, relatively cheap the Raspberry Pi hardware works pretty good for us now, what you do is you go out into the website, and if you go out to the website and you purchase the the Raspberry Pi uh, module, that module can be downloaded to your your um, your computer, and of course, you could then install it into your into your code. So, under the package manager, under Tools Package Manager, you'll actually see you'll open that up, and you'll actually be able to go and and um, and install find and install um, your Raspberry Pi file. So for example, you'll go out to your computer, find the package file, and then uh, say install, and it will put it into your, into your uh, system. And it will be a choice that you can use. So you saw on the first video when I uh, originally selected uh, the device, the device itself I selected was the Raspberry Pi. And uh, when I do that, it comes up, the project is made, as we can see here, with the I.O. down at the bottom. And, of course, at the top, you see Raspberry Pi. I'm using the 
a multi, what's called a multi-core instead of the old single core version. So I have a Raspberry Pi 3 here. But anyways, that's uh, not too much. I didn't want to go too far into the Raspberry Pi because this is a Codices video, not, not a Raspberry Pi video. But anyways, um, online, if you just want to actually go out and view and download to the Raspberry Pi, what you actually have to do is you have to select the Raspberry Pi as the device. You, you may have multiple devices on your network, whether it's a Raspberry Pi or an Eaton PLC or an ABB PLC. Um, you still have to go out and select that as the PLC that you want to download to. So to do that, you go over to the devices menu here. You select devices and, and you can scan the network and under communications, you scan the network and the device will show up. Again, in my case, it's a Raspberry Pi and I'm going to say OK. And of course, it then selects it as the target device over on the right here. And again, I think we did see this in the first video. You see the green dots on each device, the gateway and the device. And then you're going to be able to actually download to it. So if I go and log in, I'm logging into the Raspberry Pi uh, and uh, it will uh, it will actually go and uh, log in and actually use the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can see I'm using that. You can tell because I don't have the simulator turned on down at the bottom here. And again, if I press start, you'll notice that it's actually running and I can toggle my push button and go from there. And you'll see the, the uh, toggle and right click and the device is actually running. Okay, so we saw that. That's what we saw in the first video. Let's go back out. I'm going to go back out, log out from my Raspberry Pi here. And uh, actually, I'm going to go back to the simulator. I want to use the simulator only because it's just a little faster uh, to go back and forth with things in the computer uh, than going out to the Raspberry Pi. But anyways, I'm going to go and turn on the simulator. It's basically right inside my computer now, and I should be able to download, upload, down, or download to the simulator and, and use it for my project. Okay, what I wanted to show you here is a couple other options. Um, of course, we talked about in the first video how there's different languages. So there's structured text, there's function block, there is ladder logic, there's a bunch of different languages in the Raspberry Pi. But one I didn't mention was the visualization language. And this really, to me, this is, this is a really nice feature in the, in the uh, Codasys project, um, in the Codasys system, is it comes with a, an HMI or a visualization, they actually call it. Of course, the visualization itself could be, it could be downloaded, it could be created for hardware. You could actually create it for hardware or you can actually create it for a web page. There is actually uh, the ability to uh, mimic that visualization into a web page and you can view your HMI or quote, quote, HMI in, in a web page. So anyways, to, to add that to the project, what you actually want to do is um, you have to actually add the visualization manager and, and then the visualization screens from there. But what you do is you right click the application and you can add devices into or objects into the, into the uh, project. And specifically, I'm going to add the visualization. Now, it's going to take a couple of seconds here to, uh, to actually come alive, but I'm going to select its active vis visual symbols and say add, and it's going to go and add it to my project. Once we do that, the visualization toolbox on the right hand side is going to become available and we're going to be able to actually create uh, our, our screens and our pages. And, and then um, I'll just create a, just a very simple page that works with my push button and lights here and, uh, and um, we'll be able to see that actually work. So you can see now I've got, uh, if I flip back between the tabs, there's my visualization tab and my PLC tab. All right. So I'm going to go back to the visualization tab. And again, I'm just talking really simple here. Uh, I, I don't want to go into all the features of the visualization. And we're going to expand on that in, in subsequent videos and look more in depth in things. But bottom line is I just wanted to show you, you know, a push button and a switch. So I just want to drive this push button and the light, uh, sorry, the push button and the light with my visualization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag down over on the right hand side under lamps and switches and bitmaps. I'm going to drag a push button down onto the screen. 
I'm going to go back to the toolbox and actually put a lamp down too. So I've got a push button and a lamp in my in my visualization. And of course, there's this is very much like Visual Basic in the sense that you it's object oriented first of all, but second of all, when you uh, when you highlight a device, you'll notice on the right hand side its properties become available. Uh, one of the properties that you want to to work with is the variable. So specifically, you tie this to, in this case, the light. I'm going to tie it to my light one. I'm going to open this up when I, again, when I go to select the variable, there's the, the ellipses button becomes available. You click that and you can go down and actually pick underneath your PLC program, light one. Okay, that's a local variable. We're going to talk about global variables later on in another video, but that's a local variable, a variable that's local to that particular PLC uh, routine. Okay, so that's my my light one. Uh, if I want to add the push button, I can again, I can configure the push button by highlighting it and then going over and picking its variable as well. The ellipses button becomes available. I'm going to pick push button one and um, they're set. Now you'll notice just the structure, just, just take a look at the structure down the side here. There's a couple of things that happen. We have uh, when we add the visualization in, uh, it actually adds the visualization manager. It gives me the web visual uh, visual and and it's actually selected visualization as the initial screen uh, the start screen that it's going to use if and when you know we we, we want to use the web visual actually uh, the web the web screen um, going from there I you know what I'm just going to download this and and show you this uh, visualization actually working so let me go online I'm gonna go online I'm gonna log in and uh, I'm in simulated mode. So again, this is just going to be on the simulator, but it could be in real hardware. Uh, it could be, it could, you could be using a web page uh, to access your device or, or whatever. But I'm going to, yep, click on that and you'll see the, the uh, visualization, as it says, the online visualization is waiting for a connection. Uh, what it's waiting for is to start the application. So I'm going to hit start and you'll notice the web, web view, the visualization starts working. I'm going to double click up here at the tab, which is going to put it into a sub window, which is going to allow me to actually see both, both the ladder logic and my visualization running at the same time. And you'll notice that when I go and hit the push button, you can see the ladder logic's actually working. Okay. Now, again, in a subsequent video, we're going to go farther into the web visualization. You'll see the web page actually working uh, and so on. But at this point, this is a great little, um, great little HMI, uh, great way to actually work with your Codasys project. And that is the end of our second video. Um, again, if you could do me a favor and just share and or like this video, and we will uh, hopefully we'll see you coming into future videos. Thanks.